everybody, it's Sarah and I am back with another review, however this time sadly not a positive one. I don't have them a lot, uh, negative reviews, but I do have them sometimes. Also this review might at some point get a little bit ranty, however this is not a rant review. So you know, I will try to at least not stay objective because objectivity in reviews doesn't exist but you know I will try to at least be somewhat balanced in what I'm saying. So the review that I am talking about is Daughters of Istihar by Hadir El Spai. This one was the buddy read for my book club of Queens, Witches and Valkyries in April. My book club is all about reading adult fantasy by women and genderqueer folks in... I'm not sure when I'm going to be uploading this, probably sometime in May. So if you're seeing this at some point in May, then we're currently reading The Children of Gods and Fighting Man by Shauna Lawless. But if it's not uploaded in May, then I will just leave the Discord linked down below and you can check out what we're currently reading. So as all of my reviews, I will start with a summary of this book. However, I will switch around the positive and the negative because, to be honest, as there usually is not a lot of negative or objectively negative stuff in a book, aside from stuff that are just my personal preference. For me, with this book, there's not a lot of positive stuff. There's just a bunch of, you know, stuff that I didn't find positive, but that I think some people might find positive. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll switch the positive negative around, but first let's talk about what this book is. This is the first book in a duology called the El Maxa duology. It's adult high fantasy and it's Egyptian inspired. In it you follow two women. One is the daughter of a very noble house who is about to be forced to marry the son of the richest family in her country to, you know, help her father's gambling debts with the money that they're gonna get for that family, basically. She is not quite happy with that because she wants nothing more than to join the Almaxa Academy, which is an academy for weaving. Weaving within this world is basically bending. Think bending from Avatar The Last Airbender, it's that. And our main character is a water weaver, so she can manipulate water. She wants to join Almaxa Academy to be able to do that. However, as a woman, she's only allowed to do that with tuition and also with the signature of her father or her husband. At the same time, Nihal, which is the name of the character, also kind of starts taking part in meetings of the Daughters of Istihar, which is an organization of women, of weavers, who are fighting for the right for women to vote and in general just equal rights for women. Our second character is also a member of the Daughters of Istihar, it's Georgina. Georgina, however, is part of a working class family and she's also the former lover of Nihal's now husband. And so through the Daughters of Istihar, the stories of those two women kind of start to align and entwine with each other. Also, the story is sapphic. So, I think with this one, funnily enough, like the last review, maybe not that you'll have seen, but that I have filmed, was God Killer. And in God Killer, I talked about how seeing the book kind of adjusted my expectations and how with the expectations that I went into with this book, I really ended up enjoying it. With this book, my expectations are one of the reasons why I just, to be honest, really couldn't stand the book. I ended up giving it like 2.5 stars and the reason for that is that this book on paper sounds right up my alley. It's about women taking back what they're owed, it's about queerness, it's set in a non-western setting which I often really intend to enjoy because I think that authors that don't work within non-western settings just often find ways to add something new to the fantasy genre and so th there's a lot of elements here that are right up my alley. The book just absolutely wasn't for me. So let's get into why it wasn't for me and let's put this one back here. So I said I'd start with the positive things, however for me personally there really weren't that many positive things. 
I do think that it's not necessarily a bad book. I think if the things that bothered me, and I'll get into them, don't bother you, I think this is a book that you could enjoy. I think this is a book that, for example, YA readers could really enjoy. I don't like to do that because I'm the number one person who will complain about women in adult fantasy automatically being put into YA. I think this book would have worked way better as YA, at least for me. If I had gone into it with the expectations that I have for YA, maybe I would have still not loved it because I absolutely hated the main character, but I would have enjoyed it more, probably. I, I would have been more lenient with the book because it, it does a lot of what YA does. So I think there's readers out there for this book. I just wasn't that reader. There were two characters that I did enjoy, maybe three-ish characters. I did like Georgina as a character, however, she got like, I think, a third of the POVs, while Nehal got the other two-thirds, so I just thought that she wasn't focused on enough. I have my issues with that as well, I'll get to that later on, uh, why I think it was a bad decision to have Nehal be the focal character. I did enjoy Nico, who is Nehal's husband and Georgina's former lover. He is an absolute cinnamon roll, although once again, even with this character, I think the author fucked it up a little bit. And I enjoyed Malak, who is the leader of the Daughters of Istihar. I don't have that many complaints with Malak. My main complaint is that I think she should have been older. Um, she is, in the end, Nehal's love interest and I didn't think that fit at all because maybe that was just me but when I started reading the book I imagined her to be at least 10 to 20 years older than Nehal and um, but apparently she's just in her early 20s once again I, it just why do we always in adult fantasy books have to have all the characters that play major roles, especially on the good side, why do, why do they have to be in their 20s? There's like, there's no reason whatsoever. Like, none at all. So yeah, those were the three characters I enjoyed. Uh, but now let's get into my issues with the book. So, first of all, the writing just wasn't for me. Like, the writing wasn't bad, but it was incredibly bland, and I am not someone who enjoys bland writing. This is the type of writing, once again, that I would say you might not mind if you're not a writing-focused reader, if you're the type of reader who thinks that maybe flowery or purple prose distracts from the actual story, then this is up your alley. If you don't mind Brendan Sanderson's writing, you're probably also not gonna mind the writing in this one. I just found it incredibly sad because the potential setting for this was incredibly vibrant and that vibrancy just didn't come across at all within the story. It was just, it was bland, it was whatever. I didn't want to read any of the descriptions of the characters of the surroundings or whatever because I don't even remember if there were that many descriptions, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, the writing just really wasn't for me. It wasn't necessarily bad writing, but you know, it was it was very standard writing. Then, in terms of the romance, I did not like the romance in this one whatsoever. Like, it was very tell not show. You had the two characters, Malak and Nehal, who spend a few evenings together. We were just told that they spend a few evenings together. We didn't spend time with them on those evenings. We were told by some of the other characters when, like, Nehal was talking about Malak that she seems very, very into Malak, but, you know, it, it didn't really come across in the writing and in the way Nehal acted for me. And then suddenly, you know, Nehal finds out that there's such a thing as being queer and um, they kiss and that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's like... That's the extent of the romance that we have in this story. So my biggest issue with this book was Nehal as a character and connected to that also how activism not was portrayed in the story, but like activism was done in the story is also the wrong way to put it. But like when it comes to activism and when it comes to human rights and to demanding your own rights, 
the the issue itself often is very black and white like women obviously deserve the right to vote however how you get there has a lot of different shades of let's say white or gray or whatever you want to call it like there's a lot of different ways you can get to the same goal or a lot of different ways people think you can get to the same goal it's what activism often makes so difficult because you will have people fighting for exactly the same thing and one group of people thinks that what another group is doing is just morally completely wrong and so there's a lot of friction within you know within activist groups a lot of times and you know that nuance just wasn't portrayed whatsoever within this story there's some friction there sometimes but like not a lot also this book was just completely lacking intersectionality because and that is the reason why i think georgina would have made the better main character while nehal is obviously the main character i mean maybe that will change in the second book but you know because while there are sometimes comments that nehal obviously comes from a very different like social class than a lot of the other daughters of Istihar. Like it's commented on but there's never really anything done with it. And so like it's commented on that Nehal for example has less to worry about than other people because even if everything fails for her like she has less to lose basically because she will probably still go back to her husband she will have a shitty life obviously because she won't be able to make her own choices but she won't lose for example her livelihood or anything along those lines and i think georgina as someone from the working class would have just been a way more interesting pov to like explore a lot of the nuances of why it's so important for women to have rights. For Nihal it was basically just that she wants to go to a max academy that she then go to war and go to the army which I also had a big fucking issue with because I don't know it just seemed very very nationalist which is weird like it didn't fit together for me. It doesn't fit together for me how someone who is just oppressed on multiple levels I'll get to the other one later on then is so nationalist that they want to join the army i feel like i kind of lost my train of thought but yeah nehal had less to lose she doesn't have her livelihood to lose she would obviously still have a shitty life with no rights but you know at least she can be rich while doing that so i think georgina would have been a more interesting character to explore the daughters of istiha through because we could have explored more of an intersectional level and then the other thing with the intersectionality that just didn't come in is that weavers in this country also only recently got the right to their academy back and apparently also are oppressed or at least there's a lot of judgment of weavers and a lot of prejudice against them but it's not really like explored how that plays into bigger society we have a couple of characters making comments about dirty weavers and we know that the academy only recently was opened back up but aside from that it doesn't play into the story like why does it not play into the story it seems like a really big fucking thing to to have that in there so yeah it's it's just it's a struggle and then lastly i just really didn't like nehal as a character i don't know if it was on purpose that she's supposed to be annoying and stupid as fuck but i don't think it was because i think if it had been on purpose there should have been like some type of character arc within her story however she starts at the same point that she ends at and that is just very set in her ways which you know there's admirable things to that she will discuss women's rights with anybody like her stepfather ain't about that women shit let's put it like that and she does not care that he's her stepfather and that she should technically show respect to him if someone tells her that women are in any way worse than men she will say something instantly and you know that's an admirable characteristic or something however she is so focused on saying something and on you know 
putting the word out there that she does not think in regards to how things could be helpful. And there's multiple instances where she makes things worse for the daughters of Istihar because she's like, well, we have to do something. And she doesn't understand why, for example, other daughters of Istihar might not be as, you know, enthusiastic about instantly doing something because they have more to lose and they don't want to lose their life or something along those lines. Like, why they don't have the same abilities to do shit and to change shit as she does. And why maybe other people who are oppressed through other things, you know, why they can't unequivocally support her all the time constantly and that yes those things are unfair but sometimes that's just like how the system works and that other people are just as oppressed as she is and I think that's my biggest issue because she she like never had that spark of recognition and of understanding of how things work within an oppressive system like she's always like yeah i'll just go to my uncle who's the chef of police and he'll help me because he's my uncle and then she'd be absolutely astounded when he doesn't do that and it's just it's very hard it's it's a struggle because yeah it's <laughs> that's not how things work honey I don't know what to tell you and I think you could still use a character like that to criticize why don't things work like that but that character still has to understand things and it just felt like it was very immature how she acted a lot of times which also is why I think it would work better as a YA story because a lot of the ways in which the like themes were handled about revolution about like activism about working against the system the way those things were handled was very immature and very one note and i would have been fine with that ish in a ya story however in an adult book really like whatever um and then the last thing that i want to criticize is the character of nico nico is a character trope that I usually enjoy a lot. He is the character trope of the character who in general is very sympathetic to the cause but who also dislikes conflict and who you know isn't directly influenced by the oppressive system. He in effect on all levels is part of the ruling class and part of the people who have the most to gain from a change in the status quo. He is a man, he is part of the richest family in the country and he's not a weaver so he literally has nothing to worry about and he is sympathetic to the cause but he's also like well do you have to do it that way? Do you have to do it that way? And so I do like those characters because I think with the way those characters can be challenged within stories can just, you know, challenge certain readers. I like those characters because those characters get me to think. They get me to think on issues where I'm not directly like involved in those issues is the way those characters react, is this how I would react and maybe I should react differently and so on. And so I really enjoy those characters if they're done well. Nico is not done well, he is done horribly because Nehal is done horribly so he can't be properly challenged in, you know, his ways. There is one instance where he's kind of challenged and that is through Georgina. I did enjoy that one but whenever Nico and Nehal were clashing I was pretty much only on Nico's side even if I maybe shouldn't have been but yeah I just couldn't stand Nihal whatsoever and yeah I think that was pretty much it like there's one big thing that I also want to rant about but I kind of can't because that goes into deep spoiler territory maybe I'll just make a TikTok on it or something but yeah, that was pretty much it for my review for Daughters of Istihar. Sadly, this book was not for me. Um, actually, sadly, because it was one of my most anticipated releases of the year. By now, there's two anticipated releases that just weren't it for me this year. But yeah, tell me in the comments down below if you have read the book. Do you have similar thoughts to me? Do you have different thoughts to me? Actually, one last thing. There's also, but I don't want to go in too into depth 
on that one. I think you should still be able to find that review if you go on the Goodreads page of Daughter of Estihar and then filter for one star reviews. But there was one review that I think was Own Voices that also talked a little bit about how this book like pr portrays some harmful stereotypes in terms of Egyptian society. Um, so yeah, go and look up that review. I don't just wanna, you know, copy everything <laughs> what they said, uh, but yeah, I think those are some interesting aspects. I don't know how true or how wrong they are because I'm not familiar enough with Egyptian society and stereotypes surrounding Egyptian society to say if they are or not but I think it's definitely something worth checking out. I will try to leave the review down below if I can, but if not, again, just filter for one star reviews on Goodreads for this book. But yeah, where was I? If you have any more thoughts on the book, uh, tell me in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and also maybe subscribing and all the links to my social media will be left linked down below. So go and check those out and I hope I'll see you very soon. Bye.